possession crucial from this. How much longer will the referee allow? Dublin lead by a point. And there's the whistle. It's over. It's over. We earned it by winning the last two matches on the road, and that's not going to be taken away from us. But what I love in Hurland, I love players that will never give in. He hits it. He hits it. Wow. It's over the bar. Hello, welcome to the RTGA podcast, the football championship preview. Uh, I have Roy O'Neill with me as always, and we're also joined by Mick Foley of the Sunday Times and Kevin McStay. How's everybody doing? Good, good. Right. Good, good, good. Right, yeah. Um, just for those of you watching, um, the, the Zoom lottery has thrown myself and Mick beside each other. Not only do we share a name, but uh, some physical similarities. Uh, Mick records we look. <laughs> what was it, Mick? We, we look like prophets handing down tablets to the lads below us. I think two old Old Testament prophets uh, handing down the tablets of wisdom yeah. lads beneath us. Yeah, I always yeah. I always fancied myself as a bit of an Elijah anyway, Mike. I know about you. Uh, all, wis- yeah. all wisdom gratefully received. We really we should have put the guys with the impressive uh, facial hair on the bottom of the screen and the lads with the good <laughs> head of hair on the top of the screen. I've, I've got this all wrong. I need to fire my producer being me. Um, so welcome along to the Old Testament uh, football championship preview. Where um we're definitely we're, we're doing away with the rule, but uh, we're we're very strict on any infringements. It's Old Testament it's Testament style. Um, uh, Mick, I'm gonna start with you because you kind of you wrote a piece in the Sunday Times um last weekend, kind of saying, can we can, will, will will arrival to Dublin please stand up and you in the over the course of eight or nine hundred words kind of spelled out why there isn't really one unless you look at Kerry. I was uh, discussing this with a few of the lads in work uh, actually during the week. I, said, I think we've all kind of got Stockholm Syndrome. It happens at the start of every championship. Last December, there was the uh, you know, forests were cut down to write reams and reams about how Dublin have just destroyed gay football. No one can get within an inch of them. Uh, with John Conlon's campaign to have them defunded. Um, it was the, the end of time again. And now here we are, what, six six months later, and most people, including Kevin Dumbledore, we'll get to Kevin Dumbledore and say, oh, Jesus, Kerry now, Kerry, you're looking all right. This is the Kerry team that, you know, got lost to a not very good Cork team. Careful, whoa, whoa, whoa. Careful <laughs> with your words now. <laughs> and conceded four goals against Dublin a couple of weeks ago. So are we all just looking for hope here, or do do you think Kerry actually have a chance? I'd have a great chance, but, like, you know, it's there's 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 nothing like no matches in the GA for, you know, teams to get better and players to get better. and, like and death is a good backwards. career they move. Done, they've literally done nothing, like, but suddenly they're back in the pecking order and they go forward or up and down. It's great. Um, yeah, look, it's, it's. I think it's also the nature of the, the, the championship and the, the structure that we have, the knockout again this year, like that we're, that we're, that we tend to look forward a lot. Like we were looking ahead to Kerry Dublin, whereas it's kind of an assumption that they'll both be there. And it's a reasonable assumption, obviously, but yeah. the the fact that you know, in my opinion, anyway, like the knockout championship is a dead duck as a concept, and like it really, um, for so many teams, it's, it's just a lot of roads to nowhere that you're 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 naturally inclined almost to kind of look um, towards towards the the, the 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 big two or is there a big three? Um, also, the nature of the knockout championship, <clears throat> excuse me, is that it favors teams that have well embedded personnel well embedded managements well embedded systems you know evolving along there are a couple of teams that are behind Dublin and Kerry that just there's you know you know for one better, they're just not ready yet they're not ready to make that jump I feel um so when you boil it all down like it, it does come down to Dublin Kerry but of course as we saw last year the all knockout also reserves the right to absolutely pull the rug out from one from or anybody's feet on any given day depending on the circumstances but you, you know the fact that it happened to Kerry in particular last year, you would expect, from what I've seen of them, I was I've seen them twice now in the flesh, and you know every single day is a statement now for them. So yeah. it, it would be very difficult to see them slipping up the way they did last year. Yeah, Kevin, you, 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 can you make your pitch for 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 Kerry there? I, I obviously, for those who didn't read your column in the Irish Times, you have been impressed by what you've seen. Yeah, and um, notwithstanding the defeat to Cork, I was at that match, and you know. Uh, well done Cork and all that but 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 um, I'd go one further back lads I'd say in assessing Kerry I go to the 2019 final you couldn't argue there wasn't cigarette paper between them there just wasn't um, uh, the draw and replay okay the merchant goal stretched a little bit but the um, I, I think 
leaving aside the football aspect of it, make use of, you've seen them twice in the flesh. Um, and they're very impressive, of course. They're very, very easy on the eye when they're in full flow. Um, and the only asterisk really of their league form was the uh, goals concession against uh, against Dublin. So I'm, I'm just going to leave the football part aside and go into the psychology of it and the want and the hunger and the tradition. And, well, you know, what, what we know from history is that Kerry just don't stay down this long. You know, they, they, they rise eventually. And there is only one thing uh, uh, that's on their mind. And I think you're right, uh, Mick, in saying that um, every outing is a statement uh, from them. Uh, and uh, I see nothing, nothing but pain for Clare uh, at the weekend, unfortunately, after a good season. Because there's so many teams now, uh, their season is over, really. The league was the highlight of it. Um, and I, I wrote down 50, 60 percent. I'd say I probably, if I looked at it in detail, you're probably talking up around 75 percent of the teams. Their season is over. The leagues are as good as it gets. And, uh, and the knockout will knock them out. Uh, I have it down to uh, Dublin and Kerry and then a sizable gap for a lot, for many of the reasons, including, again, the one, Mick, that you did mention. They literally just don't have the time. There's too much learning on deployment. Uh, as I was, I was saying in that piece, the, 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 the coaching time hasn't been there to tidy up what needs to be tidied up, in, in, you know, whether that's defensively or offensively, whether it's just selection, whether it's just experience, all those things. And I, I think you're quite right in saying there's a group of teams coming that are just not ready. Uh, and I might include Galway there. I could include a, a, a youngish enough Mayo team. I could certainly include Armagh. I could include... Um, I could include perhaps Donegal in it, maybe a Tyrone team under brand new management. All they, they all fit into the not ready just yet. So the draw has has uh, ordained that it's 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 a it's a Dublin Kerry final, and even with the vagaries of the knockout championship and the idea that you can get caught, I see I see only really one opportunity for Dublin to get caught. That's the final, and I can only see one opportunity for. For for uh, Kerry to get caught, and that's the final as well. Okay, that so that there. that was the RTGA podcast football championship preview. We hope you enjoyed it. But 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 I do I, like it, it, it. Does it paint a bleak picture for Gaelic football? Maybe, maybe it does. I mean, how much could we have expected from the championship anyway? Cork and Kerry in a Munster final, Galway, Mayo and Connacht. Ulster will be the usual lottery that it is and Dublin to steamroll Leinster. And I think this obviously goes back to the championship format in its, which we're not going to go down the road. The one thing that I would like to point out though, and I find this sort of amusing to a certain extent, and I'd be very interested in both of everyone's view again on this. And I saw Eamon Sweeney writing at the weekend, you know, saying that we the, the, the nation, the nation right needs Kerry and Galway to make a make a fist of this championship for us for for all our sakes now to my mind Kerry coming to replace Dublin is a bit like Voldemort replacing Darth Vader like you're not bringing a, a new freshness to all of this like this is just replacing one behemoth with another who will probably like Kerry don't come with the ambition to win ones and twos they're coming for a gulp here and like while the last 10 years might have been very blue, from a Gaelic football's perspective, we could be looking at 10 years ahead of us, which are very much green and gold. And then the fun doesn't long be going out of it for everyone. Jeez, I, no, I, like, I, I call that an optimistic viewpoint myself. Just a, a, a change, a change is uh, good. Those of uh, us who are downtrodden, a change uh, of dictator would be nice. It's just a change, isn't it, Mick? I think, mm. I think again, I, I, at the risk of sounding like a broken record, again, Traditionally speaking, over the last century odd, before the back door came in of, of knockout football, it conditioned people in other football areas of the country to look at a crowd like Kerry and go, oh, geez, I love watching Kerry. You know, I, I just love the way they play the game uh, and they play it at a level that my own team will never reach because it's, it, because at that time it was just, it, there was just was very little chance, as we are seeing now, as Kevin pointed out there. For teams to progress and knock out. So they naturally, Kerry would have become a second team for an awful lot of people. So even quite aside from Dublin's dominance, there is a latent support for Kerry that you find when you talk to football people around the country. They just love watching, especially up north, they love watching Kerry. And you know, the idea of the of, of a, a Kerry team kind of conducted 
Is that and a bit of old pig? Is that a bit of old pig? Sarah's Graham McCree stuff, though. That sort of in. Well, look, I suppose that look it annoys. Unless you meet them, unless you meet them, yeah, yeah. Un unless you meet them, it is Graham McCree stuff. Yeah, when yeah. you meet them, then you realise what it's actually all about. <laughs> yeah, but, yeah. Like that's and that's the, I said that as a compliment, like. But mm. you know, the idea of a David Clifford inspired orchestrated Kerry team coming and sweeping, sweeping to an All Ireland is. Is, is, is a wonderful sight and you know yeah. that's not either to do and that's not to downplay Dublin I mean a Dublin orchestrated by Brian Fenton Kieran Kenny and Conor Callaghan is a pretty thrilling thing as well which Correct. I think we'll yeah. only appreciate in many years to come you know mm -hmm. but I'm not sure I'm not sure if it's teed up for Kerry dominance like if they lose if they, sorry excuse me if they don't win this one um, they'll be gone eight years or an All-Ireland which is the third longest spell in their history uh, the longest is the 11 years from 86 to 97 that we're all well aware of. The other one is the decade between 1914 and 24, when obviously the Civil War and the War of Independence was in. And I think Kerry would not have competed in, uh, off the top of my head, three or four championships. Even Kerry that. had better, even Kerry people had better things to do than play football. They apparently so, yeah. Mm. So um, so we're there, they are staring down. I mean, that's not going to be in their minds, obviously. But... There'll be a bit of pressure on them, though, Mick. There will be a bit of pressure. There'll be certainly be a bit of pressure on management, I would think. There will be think, pressure on them, though. Well, I, I, I think, you know, when you look over the last, let's say, 18 months, back to when Donny Buckley stepped away from the management, and then, obviously, the, the lockdown kicked in, they come back, um, they picked the team they did against Cork to go out to play the way they did against Cork. As Kevin, as Kevin was kind of alluding to almost earlier, though, a lot of stuff needed to happen there for Cork still to win, uh, yeah. even though that, that. it could be argued that Kerry <laughs> made a mess of it. Um, a lot of strange things had Thank to happen. So, so, but there is, you're, 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 you're quite right. I mean, there's um, anger is probably the wrong word below, but every move is being observed mm -hmm. and passed and analysed for what it tells us about the team and the management and the la and the personnel. So like, like I was at the Galway game and, you know, for all that Galway probably knew what was coming, there's no, what do you do? Like yeah. Kerry, Kerry came out and from the word go, every single run, every single tackle, never mind the scores, every single engagement on the field was a personal statement by each player. You could see it. And even the, even the management on the line, they were engaged and involved and they were pushing, pushing, for most of the game. Um, and it was, I mean, we, we could talk about, I mean, the Tyrone thing was funny. Like, I mean, I think Tyrone are evolving towards a, a style of play that would actually be probably sustainable for them in the long term, the way the game itself is evolving. But at the moment, they're working through personnel that they're getting to know. They're working through a system that the, that, that is quite alien, really, in a lot of aspects to the, to, to the players that have been asked mm -hmm. to play. There's an awful lot going on. And they got absolutely steamrolled. Um, yeah. There are worries around Tyrone. That's it. But Kerry, everything is... Everything is a sort of a we're here and we're we're here to play. You know? uh, let's uh, let's jump on to Tyrone then, Kevin, because I wanted to mention the you know the knockout as as the lads both mentioned knockout football suits the the you know the traditional counties the the most players you know most tradition everything everything like most of Kerry's All Ireland titles have come from the knockout football championship. In fairness, whereas Tyrone are are very much their success was built on you know. The other, the, the newer format of the of the All Ireland Championship, and um, there was a lot of excitement up there with the changing of the guard because I think people felt that Mickey Hart things had gone stale. But with the changing of the guard, as Mick says, comes the need to change players and to change style. And well, everybody might think Tyrone might be a great team next year. Would you even back them to win what now looks like a quote unquote winnable Ulster Championship? No, it's always dangerous trying to hide yourself. You have a handle on the Ulster Championship. <laughs> um, the the could, but just as easily they may not. They may well not win it. Um, the draw is, is is a tough enough draw for them. Um, Donny Gall are on their side, isn't that right? Yeah, I think it Cal is. Yeah, they have Cavan first yeah. game. Yeah, and Cavan first game. Um, a couple of things um, about the Tyrone scene. Um, new management, no time. That's that's the first thing I would say. Uh, and they're going through a paradigm shift, pretty much. Uh, you know, 20 years of a certain way of playing, and they're trying to shift that up now. That is not going to be simple. Um, and also, 
I would put again, I, I go back to psychology now. I've gone mad on psychology this season. Um, the hammering that they took against Kerry, that will stay in their heads for a long time. There is no team I know, and I had plenty of experience of getting Scotians <laughs> uh, in Division Two with, with Russ Common. It is a very hard thing to get over, for, especially on a week to week championship or a week to a fortnight gap, perhaps at, at best. And that is out there. That has to be handled. For instance, I understand they played Ross Common the other night in a challenge. Both teams really searching for something, trying to stop the bleeding, if you like. Uh, and Ross Common were able to take them reason. I won't say handily, but they went on to win that game. Now, I know challenges are challenges are challenges, but you don't play Tyrone in Tiddlywinks too often for it to be a challenge. Um, Dara Canavan is in trouble. Uh, McShane is on the way back, but time, time, time again um, to get him back. Like you can't just come into the training ground and a week later play championship football at the pitch it's going to be at. So they've had um, they've had a, a league season with new management that all it produced was questions. Uh, the, no, no solutions at all. And so we're going to have to see now, can they learn on deployment as they kick into this Ulster Championship? I wouldn't be putting any money on them. Um, uh, it's just too much for them. I think you know our Mad Donegal are probably the better are probably the better bet yeah. in the province, um, and especially if if Canavan and McShane don't make it back. I think that, I think it's going to. It's just too early in their in 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 this new evolution. Uh, it's just too early in it. Mm. The D- Donegal evolution as well underway, Rory, and the, the the same problems keeps keeps popping up for them that they keep keep losing uh clutch championship matches and we're in a knockout championship so that's all there is so that's what they have this year and uh, you would imagine maybe Paddy Talley was right to play the most defensive brand of football imaginable the whole way through the league because maybe he was just thinking well we are playing Donegal in our first championship match so we're not going to beat them in a shootout so they're not going to have it all their own way and um, they're going to be without Oren McNeilish and Michael Murphy Declan Bonner sounded both confident and pessimistic about Michael Murphy. So he's good to go, probably. It was kind of the... Mm. <laughs> was, well, we might well, rest him. Yeah, yeah. We might rest him for yeah, yeah. <laughs> That was kind of the, the tenor of it, Rory. So Donegal have, have issues of their own, you know, and again, coming back to Kevin's theme of the day, some of them are psychological, but uh, a lot of them are also soft tissue. Well, I suppose the, the psychological issue is the fact that, let's be honest, did they blow an Ulster Championship last year? Possibly, I mean, you know, they don't get like they're they're they are, in, in fairness to the northern province, it's it is the most difficult one to win, and there's a sense that maybe they did blow it. I think this weekend they're starting their campaign. It's the first game on the Sunday game live. Obviously, Kevin, you're up there for you're doing you're doing co commentary, okay. so you will yeah. get it a really really good look. I think I've seen I've seen both of them already in in the league. Yeah, um, yeah. No expectation, and, no expectation really around down. No. No. They they were probably fortunate. Well, I would say fortunate enough, but they maintained their Division Two status with obviously a fairly routine win over Leash the last day out. But again, away from the spotlight, uh, a, playing, they are a Division Two team. Exactly, they're period. they're they're playing at home. It's in it's in uh, Park Esler, which I think it will obviously be a help to Down. There will be supporters there. Um, which again I'm sure will help down to a certain extent does it level the playing field I don't think so Donegal you'd hope even with the absence of Murphy and McNeil it should have enough to get over it but stranger things have happened in Ulster football championship clashes and it's a, it's a banana skin big time for Donegal down, down were nine points up at half time against Cavan in the, or eight anyway in the Ulster championship last year yeah that was a, you know, that was a bonkers yeah. game of football. That was bonkers, yeah. 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 Uh, Mick, so, um, so, so, that, there you go. Yeah, Mick. Um, we had Wexford manager Shane Roach on here a few weeks ago, and uh, or just before the league started, just discussing the difficulties around away games, and they are going to be a factor this year because all the protocols, all the you know, getting your food up. Are you staying away? Are you stay, like how are you transporting? Like f- so, Park Esler is is a ground that traditionally favours down. Uh, you know, because it, it's their home ground and it suits the way they play football. Maybe, perhaps, you could argue. But also, Donegal have to travel, and it, do, it it's going to add layers of complication this year. And you might have a manager or two coming out after a shock defeat, saying, "But well, what did you expect? We were away from home." Yada yada yada. I oh, hope not. But yeah, yeah, it's a, it's a nice old pull for them as well. Like I mean, it's a, it's right across, and it's you know, it's 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 a good old drive for them. But you know. 
things are bad. Things things are bad if they're going to start blaming the drive. Um, <laughs> like I look at, I think, but look, do you know what one thing struck me about Donegal? I I, I cover a couple of their matches um, over 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 the league and didn't impress me in any of the games I saw them. And really, but that wasn't necessarily a bad thing. They were also, I mean, Michael Murphy obviously is kind of the headline in injury and or and or McNeish, but they had other ones as well. They had other bangs as well to be dealing with. Start the, start the league, they probably wouldn't have wouldn't wouldn't have bothered them, you know. I mean, they got through. I mean, against Armagh, they played Armagh one night above there, and uh, geez, they were cat. Like Donegal was just mm. cat. But Paddy McBrearty got a hold of the game in the second half and kind of just they dragged the result out that got them up into uh, a game against Dublin and and pushed Armagh down. Um, so like you know, that was a good sign of them. And it, you know, when you're talking about the con in the context of winning these clutch games that they need to do if they want to take up the next step. You know it's good. Like their 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 draw, like they've down Jerry next if they win, and then they're in against Tyrone or Cavan, which is if you're going to kind of work out uh, steps on the stairs in Ulster, it's probably pretty decent. And for a team of Donegal's caliber, you'd be saying, yeah, that's that's kind of that that that'll see them well. Um, so okay, I'd be sort of hopeful enough that you know they get through those. I would expect Donegal would be my pick to win Ulster. As it stands now, again going back mm -hmm. to going back to the conversation we had earlier about just being ready, they they, they just have more time <laughs> over the last few years, um, and they're working on the same stuff with the same unit. Um, if they were to meet Tyrone, if Tyrone do beat Cavan, um, you would expect that they'd just be a little bit more together. They've kind of they've shook out the wheat from the chaff, as it were, over the last couple of years, and it, it might be in the certain the current context it might be enough. And then on they go and see how they get on in a one off in a one off in Crow Park, you know. Yeah, well, good. Didn't, they, didn't they stay unbeaten in that very difficult northern group? Am I right in that? I am, I yeah. think. Don't they? Was it a win and two draws or something like that? There's not what got them up. Yes, uh, it was. They drew Monaghan. Yeah, they drew Monaghan yeah. yeah. and they drew Armagh. 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 Who's the yeah. beast? Or oh, the bet? They must uh, the bet Tyrone. The, so the, the bet Tyrone for sale. Yeah. So like yes. again, you know, I mean, even yeah. not going well with injuries, do you know, yeah. nice see a bit of grit like that. You know, it's yeah. a bit of grit. Mm. I, think, I think something that they have as well, um, and I don't know, like interested again in views around the across the board, they do have a really good uh, presence around the middle of the field. They have some good ball winners, and I get a sense. Now, look, again, you're only working off what you've seen in the league. The teams are pushing up a little bit more on kickouts, and we might see the return of the old fashioned midfielder, the old far lighter. I'm not, look, that might all change again. Teams might decide to drop back and concede kickouts, and you'd hope that that isn't the case. But if they if if it does make it more of a scrap around the middle, I think Donegal are certainly better positioned than Tyrone because Tyrone have no midfield, um, and I think they have uh, they, at least Donegal have a platform there to, to some some way to launch themselves. A, w a word on the the two dark horses then, Kevin. In, in as you say, the the impossible to call province, and aren't we glad we have one province at least that's impossible to call? Um, Arma and Derry both had impressive leagues. Admittedly, Derry's was operating a couple of levels down, but it was more impressive than Arma's in terms of results. But Arma would have, I think, kind of pleased a lot of people, I think. And I, I talking about a team that are along the way with their manager, they're certainly that with Geezer. They're a well-developed team now. He's take, He took a young team and he's developed them. They're that bit older now and talking about around the middle. There, there's few teams stronger than them and they have some fantastic forwards, uh, great goalkeeper, great full back line. There's a lot to like about Armagh, I would say. Yeah, and, and uh, I, I, I did their last match um, against uh, Roscommon. Very, very impressive. Really bad start and then took over the game completely. Um, I would say the most impressive team, maybe, you know, after the, the big guns, obviously, but one of the most impressive teams in, in the league. Um, you mentioned midfield, and they are uh, Donaghy and well, Jarley Og and, and who else had it? Uh, it wasn't Jarlett at the start of the last time. Just uh, won't come glass. to me now. Say again. Glass. No, no, that's the Derry. Derry oh, sorry, yeah. I'm thinking of Derry. Uh, sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm just uh, the, daydreaming uh, here about Derry. I'm trying to think of um, oh, Niall, 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 and his partner, at He's the on my mind. Uh, Bradley, was, was very, um, very impressive. That was the most impressive aspect of, of, of the Derry effort at the weekend. But look, they are a lower division. Um, this is a great chance for our man now to get to an Ulster final. You know, they will be, uh, okay, Antrim will be, will be a shake. 
um, Monaghan will be the test. And you, you talked about the, the stairway to an Ulster title, Mick. It, that's a perfect step progress um, for our man. And I think they will make that step up. I think they will get to the final and they will be, they would be um, significant challengers to anybody. They, they, they have that group. Geezer is there, I think he's around seven years, six, seven years now at mm-hmm. the stage. And everything he's doing, even look at the people he has around the place uh, and his openness and his, his efforts at, at developing that squad and then throw in the two O'Neills. Yeah. And there could be anything, lads, if we get a good run uh, at looking at our man. I mean, they have the whole package. They are serious young footballers, gorgeous on the ball, big, strong men, can win their own ball, um, and they're a big plus. Um, and they have a lot of other good footballers around the place. I tell you this much: there's a lot of bite in them when they go into tackle. They go in, they go in hard. They, they, they do concede a little bit more than they should in, in, in the tackle in terms of free free kicks. But by God, uh, you have to you have to earn uh, the ball that you win against them. They're sticky, they're tight, and they, they're the big change in them um, from my time three three four years ago playing against them is they're transitioning now at mm. real pace, yeah. with real conviction off the shoulder, and they're breaking those tackles and generating frees or generating scores. Um, they are, um, well, they're not, they're not a dark horse, Mickey. Um, they're, they're, or Mikey, they're, um, they're you'd, you'd have to give us a big eye on them. They're, they're well in the mix okay. if, if the ball hops for them. They just need, uh, they just need consistency. And I, 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 you're quite right. They're a different team than they were a couple of years ago. But Armagh have gotten to a little bit like Donegal on a lower level a few years ago. They, they, they got to moments in their in their lifespan as a team where it was time to win, and they the didn't leaders. win. Yeah. You know, uh, there's been you no know, last day of the league situations where they didn't do it. There's been lots of championship games and qualifiers where they just didn't do it or they just fell apart. I think, I, you're, I think you're right, though. It's different. Jerry O. Burns. I mean, when you see an Armagh midfield of Burns and Grimley, you go, oh, you know. Um, <laughs> certain, a certain generation of us do, anyway. Um, but uh, you know, Jerry Love's a serious player. The two on it, they have they have the the structure. Do they have the depth? They took they shipped an unmerciful amount of injuries one night. Was it? They're against all beginning Toronto? to come back. They're all a few of them are getting game time at the end of the Roscommon. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Was it was it against Toronto or Donegal? They lost like about five. Toronto, Toronto. Toronto. Yeah. 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 Again, and all, and the, all to, defenders, mostly defenders. Exactly, yeah. and that speaks to your point, Kevin. They do fling themselves into the into the tackle. They, they won't be found wanting in that regard. Yeah. It'll be great to see them. It would be great to see them in a final absolutely putting it up. Or, you know, or, you know, yeah, Armagh Donegal final would be something, yeah. you know. Yeah. Monon, Monon will have an interest in it, yeah. for sure. Yeah. You know, they're, they're, they're kind of slated to meet them at semi-final stage. They'll have a big say in it also, because that's the ticket. He hits it! He hits it! It's over the ball! at the Leicester Championship they've held off on the semi-final draws for that little bit of mystery yeah. you know so um, we're going to have uh, uh, um, all credit to my own county and my adopted county I don't think either Wicklow or Wexford are going to stop the Dublin train in Ockram or Wexford on the 4th of July and then you know Kildare have shown green shoots but they need to show Jack and the Beanstalk level of shoots to be concerning Dublin at all I'm putting this in there so that I don't completely ignore the Leinster Championship. So it's not really a question. It's just Dublin are going to win the Leinster Championship, Rory, aren't they? Yeah. Yeah, and I, I, they are. There's no point in beating it. The, the only interesting... The, the, uh, we often hear this phrase. The Leinster Championship would be a fantastic championship if you could take Dublin out of it. And it would. I mean, there's it probably... Wouldn't. The standard wouldn't be very high. But... <laughs> it, it, would, it would be quite competitive, Kev, I suppose. It's probably a better way of putting it. Right? Okay. Uh, it would be a competitive championship. I mean, you'd see some... You'd see some interesting matches, and you know well, you'll you still probably... see those, Rory. But they're all just they're pointless. called they're called league matches, Rory. Yeah, but <laughs> what, what, what? Before we get back out to just one last point, I would like to before make. We get on, back to talking about the football. Right, 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 one last one more. last point I'd like to make on Ulster. Well, last year we didn't see extra time and penalties. We saw extra time, obviously, between uh, Cavan and Monaghan. Um, but we never saw penalties. And I think the Ulster Championship is so tight 
with a lot of good teams and maybe four or five contenders. I think this year we might finally see our first uh, our first penalty shootout. You have your television, you have your television producer. Television had, had television on had on, <laughs> hoping for that. But just sorry, sorry, Mikey, just to get back to uh, to get back to Leinster. I mean, good look, chance of a penalty shootout in the first round of Leinster as well. Yeah, well, yeah, there could be. I mean, like you know, Mickey Hart going up against John Mohan this weekend. I'm sure that'll probably be something interesting for people of a certain vintage. Um, there are you know Wicklow Wexford obviously the winners then face Goliath the following weekend and I suppose the big story then will be will we see the main man himself Cluxton you're you're kind of scrambling in Leinster let's be honest and look the competition I suppose really at this stage is a non-event the one thing you could say about the Leinster Championship Mick is the Leinster final is the worst game in the Leinster Championship consistently there are probably some decent games in the earlier rounds but the Leinster final is the one game that most avid football fans probably don't bother turning on well it's it's a pretty pity it is, a, it is an awful, it's a bit like the league, you, you kind of, you start on fierce interest at the beginning and by the end of it, you've lost all interest. Um, <laughs> but, you know, in fairness, not, not to be speaking in defence of the Leinster Championship, but certainly certainly in defence of the teams in the Leinster Championship, uh, just, just, just at the risk of the, uh, of the D4 media just slapping them down, disregarding them just like that. And it is, it is a symptom again of the knockout thing. There's going to yeah, be a lot yeah. of good football That's played it. in Leinster. Mm-hmm. And it is it is our natural tendency to look beyond and go a Dublin minute, shove it all aside. Like Offaly Loud is a is a big game for both teams. I mean, Offaly there's been a lot of noise about Offaly about how great they're going. Go and win a championship game there, come back to us, you know. Um, Loud's the same. Like Loud have been in a very depressed state, and they have got Mickey Hart in. There's a lot of very positive vibes around building a stadium and putting out. I I get the sense anyway, so putting out a positive sort of brand Loud, you know. So again. It comes for nothing if you don't win a championship game. And this is a good championship game to have, right? They've got a bit of momentum behind them. And you could say that by, about a lot of teams. I mean, whoever wins that game, now they have to go play Kildare. You know, Kildare have now have ambition now. You know, they have they, they have things they want to do. And again, that that could be a very trappy game for them. It's not going to be at home for Kildare. It's going to be either in Port Leach or Navin. You know, stuff is going to happen. And that is going to be the case in Munster, the same as going to be in Connor. Mm. Um and but because it's knockout, mainly because it's knockout, we're saying it all comes for nothing because yeah. they're going nowhere. At least if there was a qualifier or some kind of a system, which again, as Tori said, we won't go there. No, I imagine we won't but, go there. But, but you know what I mean. Yeah. If there was another pathway, you could start. It would be a different conversation with these games. But I would. I'm looking forward to seeing some good football in the first couple of weeks, regardless of what it means. You know what I mean? Yeah, I agree. And with GA go, you actually get to like. Say this like game. me, you'll actually yeah. be a massacre. Like me, you'll actually be able to just go and watch Wexford v Wicklow, mm. like I did last Great. year. Awful game of football in the rain. At least the weather will be better. Kev, speaking of knockout championship, this this is a kind of championship you know you were born and reared and played in. This this, this is your meat and drink. Uh, Mayo play Sligo and then they play Leitrim. Um, so this is, if you were still playing, you'd be saying, "This is my kind of conic championship draw. This is good. Yeah. We're, we're we're into a final, and then we can think about things." And, and you know, there's often an argument about you want to be tested on the way to the final and said, <laughs> you just want to get to the final. <laughs> and, 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 the then, and, and then wait for the test. Um, so traditionally, when Galway and Mayo are separated, people think that's like the Cork Curry draw, we will say down in Munster. But uh, uh, Roscommon are at home to Galway. And I talked about two teams struggling for results. Um, I think uh, Roscommon haven't won a game this season. If you put in their defeat at the end of the last season uh, to to uh, Mayo, they kind of gave up a little easily in that game. They didn't perform. So they so badly need need a win. Um, now, Galway will be favourites, um, and rightly so. I think they played the better football better football than um, Russ Common did. But over here, I'm looking literally over at the field now as I'm speaking to you guys. Um when this fixture comes along in a couple of weeks time or less than a couple of weeks now, um, I'd say anything could happen. And I'm, I'm going, again, I'm going back to my own experience um, where we were massive underdogs against them and beat them by nine points in the championship final. Uh, in 2018, in my final year, we had, we had Galway for sure. It's the game I always look back on in my management career and say, that's the bloody game that we should not have lost at halftime against the Breeze. We're up three points. We're in a great position. What, what point am I making? Is that Galway don't, or Roscommon don't 
won't fear Galway at all. It's just a funny thing in the psyche of a county or a group of players. Um, and it's just, it, it is true. Um, so that, that, that could go anyway, but the expectation is that it will be Galway. Uh, and then they have to travel to Mayo in the final. So Mayo have a tap in, you know, they're, they're, they're in the final home and host. You know, there won't be any surprises on that side of the draw. And now the O'Connor brothers and, uh, you know, one is out with a ruptured Achilles and the other one has, well, we're, you know, they're, they keep these things so secretive now. We don't know what grade hammer he, he has, but it's a four-week grade anyway, and maybe a four-week plus, which means he probably won't feature in that final. And you take out those two lads out of the Mayo side. Killian scores in league form, usually about 35, 40% of the Mayo total in championship form. It can be anything up to 50% of the Mayo total. And he is, of course, one of the best free takers in the country. Yep. So you can't just replace that overnight. And there's been no lead in to replace him. It happened on the last day of the regular season, the league season, and James hasn't the time to figure out exactly uh, how, how to talk. Who'll take that. the freeze, Kev? Well, I can't answer that to you, uh, uh, Mikey. I Kev, was on a, a Mayo podcast, the Mayo News podcast last night. Kevin McLaughlin, yeah, but, you know, Kevin does a lot of very things, uh, a lot of things very, very well, but free-taking ain't one of them. You know, not to the level of Killian O'Connor, mm-hmm. anyway, let me put it that way. And if Jeremy... Uh, is out and it looks like he is um, he had a really nice um, partnership coming up with Matt Ruan Ma- Matthew Ruan, I was watching, I saw Mayo twice in the league and their midfield was getting just to be a proper adult midfield, you know, they were doing the things they're supposed to be doing um, and and Jeremy was a big part of that, so now we're back to the last 10 years of the prelim to the Mayo Championship what do we do with Aidan O'Shea? So now you can put him anywhere you want. Now you can put him midfield 11, 14, because there's gaps everywhere. Just don't put him on the freeze. Yeah, just don't put Well, actually, he's tidy enough on them. I've seen <laughs> he a few. takes plenty of them. Yeah, yeah, he's tidy enough on them. Um, okay. So Mayo in the final um, to play Galway or Roscommon. Galway, the favourites, to come out of that. But do not, do not gamble on that match because um, you just don't know. No. Uh, you know, Go- Galway can rise themselves and have a really yeah. good go at it. Yeah. Go- Galway make have to be about the most. Uh, I'm not a gambler myself. Galway have to be one of the most unbackable teams in Gaelic football. Like, you'd be very tempted. You'd be very tempted, but uh, there, there is, there is just they're not reliable. Um, and they, and they, they're even less reliable when you consider the talent at their disposal. Yeah, I'm even less of a gambler than you, Mikey. So I'm not even going to begin. It's, it's to not an Old Testament thing. The road, <laughs> yes. Oh, ye gods. Uh, but uh, no, I think, um, yeah, not look. Galway, Galway do. Galway is as Galway does. You know, um, I, again, a little bit like Tyrone. And if we think about the way the game itself is evolving, again, I think if Galway stayed a course, and just I made this point there recently, if they can find a couple of bastards, you know. Um, just yeah. to get in there. Give, like, when I think of the 98 team, you know, and people naturally will go towards Porridge Joyce and Michael Dandon and, and these magnificent players. I, I, I always spare a thought for Tomas Mannion, you know. <laughs> um, that's what God we need now, you know. They need. Divley, Divley was no shrinking violet. And Divley, yeah, absolutely. But you know what I mean? They need that sort of. You, you've, you've got to. You know, you don't. You, 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 you've got to sort of earn the right to win the game. Um, and you know, look, all that Kevin Walsh did, um, it showed it showed a lot about what Galway need to be. I don't think they got the balance right. I think it was still a little bit too there was too much sort of learned behaviour in that Galway team rather than playing to their strengths. So is that getting that balance right? And again, like Tyrone, it's gonna to take time. It's gonna take time for Joyce. Last I mean, think last year's league before lockdown, they were flying. Sligo. And then they came back, lost, I mean, Sligo, God bless them, like, Sligo coming back playing their first championship game since 2019, you know? Um, so, like, you know, they didn't get that game, lost the game to Mayo by a point, but scrappy old match, they could have won it. Who knows where they are then, come back, you know, so it's all been, you know, they've taken awful tanking from, from Kerry. So, it's kind of, you know, I... The I, only I, thing I'd say, can I, can I put in on you there and just... Yeah. Redirect you to the Monaghan game. Yes. The, the, the yeah. narrative out, the narrative coming out of that, and we said this just off here before we, we began. The narrative coming out of that Clonus match, that's the, the one that relegated Galway, is is to a certain extent a false narrative. If you look at yep. the full tape for 60 minutes, 65 minutes, Galway played some smashing football and then took off Rob Finnerty and Shane Walsh, and then Monaghan, as is their want, 
kept at it and kept at it and got the win. And now the whole thing looks like a disaster. But in fact, Galway played quite well in that. Now, the only downside, again, nobody gets a health bulletin anymore. But Shane Walsh was brought back on with carrying some class of a leg, I think. Yeah. So he, he could be under pressure. But the Galway performance that day would tell me that they, with, without the O'Connors, if they can be less common, I'd be putting them into a 50-50 job in a Connacht yeah. final. It'll be, like, yeah, I couldn't agree more. And I, I think there is something in Galway. Whether we see it this year now, we'll see. But there is something in there, all right, coming. I mean, the Mayo, the Mayo issue is, oh, like, I mean, to lose Killian, I mean, scored 540 last year. I think 512 from play. I mean, there's he's breaking records left, right and centre now at this stage, or he was. Um, again, I made the point there at, at the weekend. I mean, for Mayo, in terms of his influence, this is losing Clifford multiplied by Khan squared, you know. Um, it keep, They're still in the provincial conversation, but they're out of the national conversation as far as I'm concerned now. Like, they're, they just, they won't have it. But they could certainly... We'll see. We'll see what comes out of Galway as common. That's going to be a huge game yeah. again in a couple of weeks' time, and we'll see what comes out of that and see what Mayo look like. But as Kevin says, if it's Galway Mayo, flip a coin and hope for the best. Yeah, you know? it's yeah. nice to get the Connacht Championship played off in about four or five weeks as well, instead of their Washington. traditional twelve weeks. It's... <laughs> we, like our, we like our rest out here. <laughs> <laughs> um, you mentioned the national question there, Mick. So we'll get on to that, Rory. Um, we mentioned it a bit last week in the, uh, the Stephen Cookson situation, and we don't seem to have any more clarity on it. And that's how Stephen Cookson operates. If he's gonna, if he'd be back, we'll see him in the goal in Ockram or hopefully Wexford Park, and that'll be Stephen Cookson being back. There's not going to be a GPA statement, as we said. But realistically, Evan Comerford comes in there, and Dublin are still short odd favourites to win the All Ireland, aren't they? Yeah, um, Kevin. Kevin wrote a very good piece, actually. Um, is it yet? Is it today or yesterday's Irish Times, Kev? I, yeah, I, yes, was, yes. I read. I was reading it this morning. You know about um, where Dublin uh, and just you know where Dublin might stand in the general conversation. I think there is an element with Dublin still. I think they've gotten under. Like I think they're in Kerry. They live in Kerry's head twenty four seven, and I think it's a great place for them to be because. I think if like the hilarious thing about this is if you have a Dublin Kerry All Ireland final, right? Let's say we're we are looking that far ahead, and I know Michael may mention of the fact that there's a lot of football to be played in, be, in between then. I'd merely nearly make the argument that there'd be more pressure on the team in a row than there would be on the team defending it, because there will be huge pressure on Kerry going into that to try and stop them, and that's a really bizarre. Plus, you have the situation where, you know, like they are obsessed about Dublin down there, obsessed. And um, I think that's a dangerous level of obsession. I think that cost them probably last year in that they probably looked too far ahead. That won't cost them this year. And I think, I don't know whether we're going to get into the vagaries of the Munster Football Championship, but I think there will be a viciousness in their display in Killarney, both on Saturday night coming and probably in the, um, in the Munster final where... Is that, is that where the Munster final is, Killarney? It's in Killarney, yeah. Well, yeah. If, it's, if, Cork, if, we assume it's, if Cork, it's Cork and Kerry, yeah, 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 it will be in Killarney. So, but, but I, but, but, but I still put up. I, I think like Kerry will still have it all to do to try and take them down. And they're like, admittedly, they, you know, they pushed them close in that league game. They'll take a certain amount of confidence from that and the fact that they narrowed a big lead, conceded some bad goals. But I still think they'll, they, it, it, the big task for them is, can they separate their obsession with Dublin, get a performance out of them on the day and ultimately slay the dragon? And I think there are massive questions still for Kerry that I think remain unanswered. Yeah. Mick, uh, Dublin, you know, they went unbeaten in in the, uh, in the very short league without their manager, which if that was any other county... And their um, captain. And their captain. If that was any other county... I'm, I'm without Dean Rock, let's be honest. If that was in your account, a, a lot bigger deal would be made of it. But the Dublin just kind of, they, they trundled on without him. And getting your manager back will surely have a positive impact. Getting Dean Rock, Rock will have a positive in, impact. And if Stephen Cookson comes back, that's a positive impact. So we, we you could make the argument we've seen Dublin at their weakest this year and they still looked pretty awesome. Yeah, yeah. Look, but I, I suppose, again, because it's three games, the league is it was a kind of a, 
peculiar thing. The mm. one thing you could say about it was wherever it left you at the end of the league is where you're at. You know, you would know a time to sort of react to it either which way. Um, they conceded more per game in the league this year than they have. Again, keeping in mind that it's only three, four games, but, you know, they did concede more. There is a question, like, look, sorry, I, I would always make the point that anyone who plays from five to 12 for Dublin can play eight or nine, but there is sort of a bit of a, there is an impact in terms of who plays at nine because that impacts on, let's say, James McCarthy, where James McCarthy play? You know, mm-hmm. who plays at six, exactly, and that impacts on their defence, so it's links in the chain. Um, up front, fine, all is good. Goalkeeper, obviously, there's a question over Cluxon. Equally, by the way, I just want to throw in, like, there's a question over the Kerry goalkeeper as well. I mean, Kerry have been playing their second choice goalkeeper and they got their sub keeper on the bench. So, like, we can talk all we want about the loss of Stephen Cluxon potentially and kick out strategies, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. Shane Ryan isn't there for Kerry. That's a serious issue for them to deal with. But from a Dublin perspective, look, they're the one, look, they're a bit like I mean, Kerry, Claire, Claire, they will beat Claire, they will beat Tip, they will more than likely beat Cork. Um it may be well, we'll see, but it's maybe not as much of a cakewalk for them as it will be for the dubs. The point I'm making is that they both have time. They both have time to work through things a little bit more, maybe more time than a lot of their competitors, as a, you know, which is not new, but it, it does matter this year more than ever. Um, so look, it's it's. I, mean, I think they will, and I think they will get a test in the semi final. Like whoever comes out of Ulster, the problem for the Ulster champions is they'll be a little bit war war weary by the time they make that semi final, and Kerry will probably have a freshness. On, on or them. hopping off the ground, Rory. Yeah, you know. Like. But but like if if for instance somebody like an Armagh who are by and large a youngish side and were able to get a bounce coming out of an Ulster Championship. I think what's, could, what's the All Ireland draw, lads? I, actually, that's the one that was Munster, Munster Ulster, Munster versus Ulster, and um, Leinster versus Connacht. Yeah, and like there's a far just on that point. I mean, there is a fortnight between the Ulster final and the All Ireland semi-final. You know, so I know what you're saying. Like it's obviously mm. there'll be there could be, but I don't know. Like I mean, if let's say for argument's sake, if Donegal came through a tough old Ulster campaign and everyone's fit. Jeez, I said they'd be bouncing off the ground to have a go at Dublin. And this is the time, if they're going to meet Dublin, I think yeah. the time, like. Yeah, yeah. true. But I, I think, I, I think you have to widen the... Oh, Mayo, sorry, the, Mayo, the, sorry. The, it's the, not Ulster, it's yeah, Connacht. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Actually, that's the one you got caught on. <laughs> <laughs> it just came back to me there now, yeah. Um, you need to write that down, Mick. Uh, I know. The, I know. The, um, the, 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 on, the, on the Kerry side, the Clifford name keeps coming up. And what that is doing, lads, is it, it's not throwing a light on the other fantastic young players that they have. Um, Sean O'Shea, lads, is as good at 11. He's going to be as good as Declan, Declan Sullivan. I can't say any more than that. He is going to be at that level of play. Ganey is a bit of a street player. You know, confidence is, is a big thing with him. But he is a very accomplished footballer. Um, so... One of the big things they had coming into it was okay, David, David, David um, Morn is David Morn at this stage. He's, he's very experienced. Can we get a partner for him? Jeremy O'Connor is his partner now, and he's going to be very good. He is going to he's going to become a very very t- uh, uh, national midfielder, definitely, no question. And their defence has massive pace in it, where it fell down previously uh, was the process of defending, the formation that they use. And no doubt, uh, they are they are thinking of the big fences ahead, mm-hmm. uh, and they won't get they'll caught. Be on, they'll, they be on, they'll be caught be, in the prelims. They just won't. They, won't, they, won't, they won't get caught in the provincial championship. But Kevin, I do honestly believe they are under pressure. They're under incredible oh, yeah, pressure. Course, yeah. They're yeah. under they incredible. Like. They're, they, no, they will deal with it and they'll live with it. But, and I'm sure the players, you know, look, they'll be well capable of dealing with. It, but the management is under extra, like. You have to remember as well, I mean, look, for for those of us who might be familiar with the vagaries of, and the histories of Kerry football, but Jack O'Connor wrote a great book, Once Upon a Time, where he spoke about having to deal with, you know, all the giants of Kerry football looking over his shoulder and the fact that he didn't have a massive playing career himself. And he found that hard because, you know, when they lost a game, invariably the, point, the finger of blame would have been pointed in his direction. Now, you have a manager down there who... Is he the warmest character in terms of his utterances with the media? I would probably say no. Does he care? Probably no either. He probably doesn't care on that front either. But what I would say is he's probably on a short string. Like you're not going to get too many goes at it from his point of view. And this is his third, this is his third goal now. And 
I'd Especially say the, with the material. The, 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 exactly, the he's working with good raw materials, mm -hmm. and if it if 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 things don't work, if if they don't bring Sam Maguire down there this summer, the natives will get extremely restless. I would suggest. It, it depends. It depends how if they don't. It depends how they don't. I think. Yeah. You know, yeah. if they go to an All Ireland final against Dublin, and it's an absolute barn burner, and they lose by a point or two. Yeah, you know, it's a yeah. different, and we don't. It's you know, it's the glory of it. We don't know. Like yeah. Peter Keane, you're quite right. I mean, he's look. They decided, they clearly decided at the end of last year that we're going our way now. Like there was a lot of pressure on to get more coaching uh, individuals in, more different dif different personnel in. Again, mentioned Donny Buckley before. Donny Buckley's gone. We need we we need a guru. You know, they didn't. They didn't. They stuck with what they have. They're going their way. He's clearly going his way. Um. What I thought was very encouraging, and this might sound a bit glib or silly, but I mean, it was encouraging to see them picking players in their best positions. You know, there was yeah. no, like yeah. Peter Keane had, had a fantastic um, ability to create, as a, as a minor coach, had a, a fantastic ability to create players for roles. So he might take, for example, a young fellow who could have been a good cornerback and turn him into a wing forward for the Kerry Miners or something. You know, things, he was able to do that. He was a great way with, like that. I think at adult level, at senior level, it's a different kettle of fish. That doesn't happen very much. So you have to, you have to go a slightly different way. And I think that that possibly is a lesson from last year. Um, you, you're seeing guys now playing in their best slots, and that's only going to benefit Kerry. Jason Foley back the last against Tyrone. Thomas Sullivan back. Huge additions. I mean, we can talk till the cows come home about the glory of the Kerry forwards all day and every day. Yeah. But it's the, the, the likes of them at the back, mm -hmm. bringing the pace that Kevin talked about, and the likes of Foley, the defensive mm -hmm. skills, just that tight in defensive skills that they're going to need when the game stretches against Dublin um, it puts them in a very good position he, he when might be Ireland, you know. he might be under huge pressure Rory I can't disagree with you there but I tell you this much if I'd be back to the ball as a manager and I was under huge pressure wouldn't I love to have the sort of quality in front of me that could get me out of oh, that yeah. pressure because yeah, yeah. you know he has <laughs> I tell you come down to the lower divisions when you're under pressure and uh, you, don't, you don't see a David Clifford trotting out for you or a Shawnee O'Shea so um, I, slice it, dice it any way you want, lads. It's it's a Dublin carry on Ireland final. Okay, I mean, so I can't see beyond it. Tw Twenty nine matches are going to be played, and at the end of it, Dublin and Kerry will be in the final. Uh, I think is being accepted by by everyone here. Even Derry oh, yeah. Derry fan Mikey Stafford is accepting that it's probably going to be a, a Kerry Dublin final. Um, does anybody, uh, in a word, Mick, who's going to be the All Ireland champions? Percentage call is Dublin at the moment. Um, but we, you know, it's a you know, I'm it's kind of like I'm on the fence and I just happen to topple over on the Dublin side, you know. It, it could it could go either way. That's not very me, old, that's not very old testament, Mick. You should be very, very sure of your views. <laughs> <laughs> very sure. It's written on a tablet. <laughs> uh, Kevin. Yeah, I, I, I can't um I like I love Dublin. I love watching them. I, I people sometimes get a sense that I don't or that I'm anti Dublin or something. I just I think they're a fantastic team. Like the best team of all time, but I think the human condition uh, is the human condition, and eventually, some you know somebody with the ability to say, "Ah, stop! Enough is enough." And I think that somebody is is coming up the tracks at speed now. And I go back to what you said, Mick, at the beginning. Every game seems to be a statement. Every 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 tackle, every snap seems to be everybody on their best behavior, putting their best foot forward. So. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna stay with what I said in the piece and okay. uh, st stay with the kingdom. Okay, Rory. Yeah, uh, yeah, I agree. I agree. I think Kerry will stop them. This is the year. I think, no matter how good and how wealthy, um, how wealthy the pack you have to shuffle from from a Dublin perspective, I think when you're starting to lose players of the quality of John Small, which we don't really know. I mean, you, Mick talked about having. Mm. Uh, a few uh, Rottweilers and a few dogs. I mean, Janey, like to lose someone like John Small, I think is actually a much bigger blow to Dublin. No, we don't know for What's how long. What's that hamstring? Is it Rory? Hamstring, and it looked yeah, a nasty yeah. enough one as well, right? Yeah. And then you've lo obviously lost Jack McCaffrey, who was such a pivotal figure in the 2019 drawn final. Mannion, and replay. Paul Mannion is gone. Uh, Mannion, oh, Stephen yeah. Cluxton. I think right. all those names. No, look, but they've shown in the past that they've had the ability to cope with those. The losses and just the the machine trundles on, but I think Kerry are just coming with a sort of a wave this time that I think will eventually see them reach the old uh, Atlantic at the old shore and 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 bring Sam Maguire back there for the first time since 2014, and they're only their their second in 
12 years like which is mm. yeah anyway but i do think i think this is carrying don't, don't try that with me now as a mayor man just please men rory fair play uh, rory you did your bit for cock there anyway fair play to you <laughs> well, yeah i know listen they, 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 what look what, what what we know for certain in killarney is sure we're only going down to make up the numbers <laughs> I'd say in, I'm, I'm 40, I'll be 45 next birthday and I've never seen Cork win a game in Killarney. No, ever. we're only going down to make up the numbers, you know. You won't be seeing it this year, I'd say, Mick. No, no, no I'm not expecting it. <laughs> Even if you'd be one of the lucky few in the stadium, you're still not going to yeah. see it. Um, yeah. All right, lads, I enjoyed that. Oh, for the record, I think Dublin are going to win because I, I lack the imagination of our New Testament brethren down there. Um, <laughs> that's it. Thank you very much to Mick Thanks, and to Kevin and to Rory. As always, just a reminder, the first football match of the year, first live um, inter-county senior match of the year on RT will be down via Donegal on RT1. Public service announcement, not on RT2. You'll have to go down to the Grown Ups channel to watch it. And yep. we'll have uh, commentary and coverage across RT Radio 1 Saturday and Sunday Sport. And we will on... Line on the RT website and the RT News app will have match reports, live blogs, reaction columns, and everything else. So we'll have you well covered, and we hope you enjoy that first round of matches. So thanks again to the lads, and we'll catch you all next time. We earned it by winning the last two matches on the road, and that's not going to be taken away from us. But what I love in hurling, I love players that will never give in. He hits it. He hits it. It's over the bar.